Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad free over at inspireddisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Hello and welcome to the Dave Recap Podcast. I'm your host, Ray Taylor, and I'm here to break down every episode of the hit F. XX comedy series. If you're a fan of Lil Dicky and his unique brand of hilarious, irreverent comedy, then this is the podcast for you. So sit back, relax, and submerge, and let's submerge ourselves into the world of Dave. In this episode, I am breaking down season three, episode two, Harrison Avenue. This aired April 5th, 2023, directed by uh Kitao Sakurai uh this episode came out the same day as the first episode which I did break down as well this episode's coming out the same day as that breakdown episode and and so on and so on and I will be releasing new breakdowns and recaps every Tuesday in this episode, Dave is back in his hometown of Philadelphia. He's grappling with his romantic origin story, both in his art and his real life, seeing his first love, his first heartbreak. Uh, we also see the absolute chaos that is directing the music video based on his love, on this love. Uh, the <clears throat> This is... Uh, Dave's version of the bear or uncut gems, just a lot of chaos going on. Uh, it seems like they they watched that up. They watched the bear on FX and were inspired to have a similarly chaotic episode themselves. Uh, this episode is full of stress, laughter, more stress, embarrassment, more stress, uh, self examination, still some more stress and creativity, obviously. Uh, this is mostly Dave and Ev Emma's episode, uh, as well as Dave's old friend, Brittany. Let's get into this episode, shall we? Uh, this episode starts with a new song. Same, both this episode and the first episode start with what is, could be a music video. Uh, this one is a song about Dave as a kid. Uh, meeting the girl of his dreams who is new to town. It is b a bit of a flashback to young Dave. Uh, it's about them being best friends, uh, but secretly him being in love with her, burning her mix CDs and chatting with her all night on AIM. Then going to a party, going to basement parties where they play Spin the Bottle and other games. Uh, and then we realize that this is actually a music video that they are actually shooting as Dave comes in to correct the actor's uh, performance as well as Emma coming in to uh, correct and kind of smooth things over. Uh, and this is where the chaos absolutely starts. The, what is almost, there are moments of calm serenity in this episode, but everything in between is a nonstop chaotic mess. Uh, and that is where it starts in this episode. Where we see that Dave is in Philadelphia shooting this music video at his parents' home uh, on Harrison Avenue. Uh, they have uh, Dave in every age. There is a actor playing Dave at every single age. And there is a problem with a scheduling issue with the kids and having to school and have their there's just a, the, the having to coordinate all these different aged Dave's uh, is, is becoming an issue. Also, Dave and Emma kind of hate the acting by the kids. Um, and not a whole great talent out in Philadelphia, as it were. Uh, Dave pulls Emma aside to tell her uh, the point of the video is to target his female audience, right? He only has a male demographic as he points to off uh, offset where a bunch of dudes are just kind of like, yeah, a little dicky trying to take pictures, right? He's clearly trying to increase his his demographic. He's trying to reach uh, the female audience, and that is the purpose of this music video. Uh, and uh, this scene seems like, uh, like I said, like they saw the bear uh, and wanted to make, I thought this was going to be, I was really impressed. I was going to be really impressed if this was going to be them trying to do a one shot uh, like the bear did. 
Uh, there are very, like, these chaotic scenes do seem to be all one take. Uh, so they do nail that chaos in having this camera follow them around as they're going in. There's, like, just tons of people just swarming around this house as they're trying to film this music video, equipments everywhere, uh, uh, people who are working as part of the staff are there. You have Dave's parents there. You have uh, Dave and the other actors there. It's just like absolute chaos. Um, Dave is also shown. Um, it's also basically Dave. It's supposed to be his romantic origin story. Is the purpose of this song and of this video. Uh, the prop guy shows Dave the uh, the dick that he made for the cum scene. Um, and he's, you know, Dave's not happy with the fact that it's an erect penis because it's very important that in that moment he actually had a very flaccid penis. And that's very important to the story because that is something that normally doesn't happen. Uh, also, Dave's mom is very upset about the blue tape that she sees on all of the walls, her newly painted walls. Uh, they rewatch playback and uh, Mike points out a moment in the video that he thought was funny, which is not right. Dave doesn't like that because it's not supposed to be funny. Uh, so he decides to try and use one of the other Daves uh, that at least can follow direction named Helm. Uh, so he's asking one of the many people. I don't know the job descriptions of these people who are working on set. I assume Emma is the director. There is a guy who is running the replays. Uh, there is a guy who seems to be coordinating with the kids. There also seems to be an assistant that is kind of trying to help coordinate these kids as well. Uh, so Dave is trying to talk to this female assistant, uh, trying to get a hold of this guy, this kid named Helm. Uh, come to find out, Emma points out that it's not Helm. That is actually his pronouns. He was wearing a name tag that said his pronouns he, him, not Helm. Uh, and that his name is actually Adam and he's in makeup. So Dave on his way to makeup cut inside the house where Dave's dad is there. Uh, and he thinks he's telling Els, Dave, it's uh, Dave's dad, Els, and Gata and Mike. They're all hanging out in the kitchen. And Dave's dad points out that he thinks that Dave's website has been hacked because when he goes to Dave.com, it just takes him to this banking website. And Els points out that Dave.com is actually, which is a, it's a real company, and I wonder if this was kind of a product placement type of sponsorship. Um, Dave, the financial app where you can borrow like up to $200 or something, get a cash advance of like $200, uh, apparently is their sponsor for the tour. Uh, and it is not Dave's website, sadly. Uh, he did not get Dave.com, but it instead is uh, this financial website. So that's what it was. Um, and uh, <clears throat> Gata, as Dave passes through, Gata asks him if he can be in his video as like a young jock. And Dave's like, dude, you look like you're 45. Uh, Dave goes in to talk to the younger Dave, Helm, uh, a.k.a. Adam, uh, to tell him that he may be uh, taking on a bigger role. And the kid is like stoked. He's like, sweet, you have no idea how much pussy I'm going to get from doing this role. So whatever you got. And so Dave's like, OK, cool. And as soon as he leaves, he's like, we got to not work with this kid. He's an animal. Uh, we can't do this. Right. Then cut to Brittany, the girl that the song is about shows up and Dave's like freaking out, doesn't understand how she could have figured out. Meanwhile, Els points out, it's like you're telling me that you are on your street, Harrison Avenue at your parents house shooting a music video with crew and staff and everything all out front. You have a giant pink tour bus with your big fat face stuck on it and you're telling me you don't know how she found out that of course is how she found out and you're seeing dave kind of freak out and almost shut down as people are talking shit as people are as gata is finding out this is the girl that broke his heart as l is talking shit about this girl right and and dave decides is like okay i'm gonna go out and uh talk to her right 
so he goes out she's kind of being kept outside by security dave's like she's fine she's with me and she kind of gives him shit right off the bat for making her wait right <clears throat> thinking that uh he thinks she's being sincere about that he's like apologizing about like oh, i'm sorry i didn't mean to make you wait right and then kind of the relief on his face when he finds out that she's you know just talking shit and she gives him a hug like kind of one of the one of the few moments of kind of peace is when he gets this hug from Brittany, right then we have the chaos and uh it just kind of uh melts away in that moment a little bit of peaceful moment as she asks uh, what the video is about and Dave's like as he's trying to describe it, he's like well it's you know like a period piece from 2004 it's about young love and then immediately she knows everything she knows what it's about um, and instantly the chaos is back uh, she asks him if she can be a cameo she can have a cameo in his video and he's like you know what I got a plan for you and as he walks in with Brittany he tells one of the producers or whatever that he's got a whole new plan for the video uh cut to them playing dave and Brittany playing their younger selves in the music video doing a rehearsal dave distracted by his remote monitor as he's trying to make sure the blocking's all right uh emma kind of keeping things together kind of making sure places are cleared out for scenes that they want to get you have l's talking shit behind one of the cameras we find one of the monitors talking shit about her bullying dave into making her uh star in the video uh and you have emma kind of loving it and saying it's way better uh shooting with them than it was shooting with the kids uh they have a great chemistry right both could be true or she just wants to be either like emma could be actually true or she just wants to get this shoot over who knows um i actually love that emma is directing this video right it was her dream that's what she wanted to do when they both when dave and her left the marketing company her dream was to direct his was to be a rapper in the end the very last episode of last season it ends with her doing offering to do a music video for gata um, and that is the music video they were preparing to do when dave and gata had their kind of uh moment their kind of uh confrontation at the end of last season so it's great to see her doing that um and emma kind of wants to get this video from the perspective of Brittany. But of course, Dave is kind of wants it to be more focused on him. He wants to have like this hero shot. And then when she like meets this other guy, he wants it to flip and it be like this underdog thing. So they meet this guy, the guy that's cast to be her like the other guy. And it turns out to be like this seven foot tall guy. And Dave goes over there to give him some notes and then sees when he steps out how tall he is. And he just makes an excuse to like leave and tells everybody's like what the fuck is this why is this guy such a giant and even emma's like we can't shoot this guy's long arms are gonna look all awkward as shit and and you know one of the other guys one of the producers like well we could put like a green screen suit on him it's like i don't want him to disappear i just want him to be shorter i want him to be normal size so dave's like we need to upgrade one of these extras to play her douchebag boyfriend or whatever and then Dave decides to keep that guy because, like, maybe we can have him. It'll be funny for, to have him do, like, some funny shots or whatever. And Emma's like, I thought you didn't want this to be funny. And Dave's like, well, you know, it's good to have, like, moments of funny in this, right? Just have moments of funny because Dave can't help but not be funny. So, and Dave throughout this whole thing is obsessed with this evolution of man shot, this evolution of Dave shot that he wants to do that requires all of the different kids all the different versions of Dave at the different ages. Let's take a quick break right now to talk about, are you a fan of original artwork and live events? Look no further than the Many Faces series by Ray Taylor and the weekly live stream over at youtube.com slash inspired disorder. 
This ongoing series explores the endless possibilities of the human face through abstract ink paintings on paper, capturing unique expressions of emotion, mood, tone, and energy in just a few minimal features. Join me every Thursday at 4.20 Pacific Time as I paint live. Follow the Many Faces series and discover the endless possibilities of the human face. Don't miss out on this opportunity to be part of the action and own a piece of original artwork by me, Ray Taylor. Head to youtube.com slash inspired disorder every Thursday to catch the live stream and visit inspireddisorder.com to browse and purchase the Many Faces artwork. And now let's get back to the show. Dave also tells Emma that he always wants playback ready now that he's in this. He, you know, always wants to be. It's harder for him to see how things are going. And Emma trying to convince him to just trust her. That is a big aspect of this. Emma trying to get just let let Dave let go and let her just handle it. She's a director. She wants this is her thing. You write the songs. You perform the songs. Let her do this. But Dave has to micromanage as always. Uh, cut to like a PA coming up, handing out coffee. She's yelling, Jew, Jew, coffee for Jew. And Dave like awkwardly walking over like, is that, are you calling out because I'm Jewish? And then of course the sound guy, this Asian guy whose last name apparently is Jew, J-O-O, is, uh, it was his coffee. So, you know, kind of a funny little, kind of a funny little thing. Um Cut to them now shooting inside his room. Brittany is there reading some old love letters from Dave uh, on the she also um, mentions or one of the letters mentions uh, Mr. Tobayashi, who Brittany wants Dave to find. Right. She's very in some ways controlling. Right. Like, hey, like giving him shit right away, which, you know, some people they have that kind of friendship, whatever. But just uh, from an outside perspective, giving him shit about not calling her and him having this busy day. And like, that's why he didn't call her. And then asking to be in a cameo. So it's like, okay, well, then I'll put you in the video. And now she's like, what is this, Mr. Tobayashi? Go find Mr. Tob. Go get him, Dave. Go find Mr. Tobayashi. So Dave, like, yells for his mom to see where it is and, like, thinks, like, maybe it's in the closet. So he finds it in the closet. And she kind of gives like this disgusted look in in some ways. Uh, but he finds Mr. Tobayashi in the closet and it's a stuffed rainbow character uh, named Tobayashi. Um, and she's surprised he still has all this stuff. And Dave's like, well, it's, you know, it's a time that uh, a, a f- profound. It's a time that had a profound effect on him. Uh, and seeing her reaction to that, he like quickly changes the subject and starts talking about how he was dating Doja Cat for a while, right? Which the reality of that is like <clears throat> they texted for a day and he completely ruined it. Like a, a, a great start and then like he completely self-sabotages and explodes the whole thing up by the end of the episode. Um, and of course, trying to like impress his ex-girlfriend by saying that he was dating Doja Cat and she, of course, playing it off, whether she knew or not, doesn't know who Doja Cat is playing it off as if she doesn't know. Um, so Dave goes in to kind of describe who she is when she doesn't, when she says she doesn't know who Doja Cat is. Uh, but ultimately they're interrupted by a PA telling Dave that his mom is in the bathroom and won't come out, uh, despite it being her scene coming up next. So on his way to go get his mom, uh, because the PA didn't feel comfortable getting her out, Mike lets Dave know. Uh, that they need to uh, wrap up early if they're going to do this shoot at Macaroni Grill because they have to, uh, you know, fire up the kitchen or whatever to do this shot. Um, <clears throat> so, and Dave's like, oh, they didn't know Little Dicky was uh, like uh, an underdog in his own city. And Dave's like trying to be like, okay, it's cool. Well, I'm an underdog in my own city. That's great. Um, kind of trying to play it off positively. 
So then he goes to the bathroom where both of his parents are there and his mom is o hunched over the toilet th trying to throw up. Uh, come to find out that she accidentally ate her hearing aids, which hearing aids are expensive. They're like multiple thousands of dollars. And apparently his dad spilled some caramel corn on the table where her hearing aids she had taken out and put them on the table because she didn't she was tired of hearing all the the commotion with everybody flooding through their house marking up the walls her newly painted walls with blue tape so she took her out her hearing aids and while eating some of this caramel corn accidentally scooped up and ate her hearing aids and dave's like well this isn't gonna stop anything we need to get this shot done he doesn't care he's like i need to get this shot done and you can deal with this hearing aid thing later um and she reminds him about the tape on the walls dave gets back to the scene where they're dancing him and Brittany are dancing as part of the scene Brittany asks uh when they were actually going to hang out uh instead of just shooting this music video and dave's like well i don't really have time and we're going back on tour tomorrow so it's like we're late tonight and then leaving tomorrow but he's like i guess i could just stay up all night and hang out with you and she kind of gives him shit for that, right? It's like, uh, what do you want? Like, he's clearly busy. Obviously, I'm sure he feels bad that he's not, but it's like, it's not, he, like, his career is more important and is clearly more on his mind than bonding with an old friend back at home, right? Like, it's getting this music video to try and hopefully get a better demographic uh, for his friends obviously he probably should have made time or thought about making time to spend time with his old friend back at home but at the same time after this tour it's not like he can't come back and spend time right like i i can see it there's so many aspects of this show where i can see it from his perspective and i know so many times that it's wrong i know it's wrong on some level but in this instance it seems like she's bullying she's manipulating him she's trying to manipulate him and trying to distract him like she doesn't care what he's trying to do there right it's not like he came and disrupted her she came she wanted to be in the video he made her a bigger part of the video and now she's giving him shit that this video is not going to allow them to hang out right giving him shit again whatever um So they get action, they start dancing, and Dave, Dave's uh, the the prosthetic penis that was made for the cum scene starts coming in his pants, but it just starts shooting out the leg of his pants like so much, and it just keeps going. It is just like massive amount. It's like a clogged up garden hose full of slime that is just pouring and spewing and sputtering out the the bottom of dave's short leg pant leg right and <clears throat> just just a big puddle of fake cum on the ground and then dave's mom comes in right and she doesn't know her lines she doesn't realize they're in the scene and uh dave's arguing with the the prop guy about how ridiculous amount the cum is coming out and of course dave's mom She's only worried about her floor, which makes sense. I mean, come on. She just got her floors done. Um, and he's mad at his mom for not knowing her lines. Come on, mom, we're in the scene. Let's do this scene. And even like his his like aggravated, uncomfortable reaction to the reality of what's going on also kind of fits in what would be depicted for that scene as well. So Dave leaves to go watch playback again emma's like we can fix it we can cut around it we can make this work right and again ask him to trust her but of course dave micromanager Brittany is curious uh what the next scene is after seeing what just happened um when he finds the direct the, the the guy who's in charge of playback he finds out that that guy used to have a huffing issue uh got into uh, a little addiction huffing lacquer and in hearing that his mom just 
remodeled and re lacquered the walls is kind of having those old feelings back and he has to leave like the the aroma and sense of it that he can smell when he's inside he can't take it anymore and he just leaves right and then you see the giant guy walk in and asking Dave if he wants to blaze right like as if that's not the worst time to ask if Dave wants to smoke weed um <clears throat> so Dave runs up the stairs uh, and calling for another take cut to more of the music video uh, her boyfriend got ground in this music video Brittany's boyfriend got grounded and then she asked Dave to go on to the dance with her and when Dave shows up to the pre-dance party uh, with like a bunch of other like 15 16 other couples he realizes that Brittany's boyfriend didn't get grounded and he showed up and now Dave is the only one there out of like 35 people that doesn't have a date so he's standing and they're taking a group picture and he's the one guy it's like the most extreme version of being a third wheel he's the 35th wheel or the 33rd wheel cut to them going to macaroni grill where for some reason the waiters think it's dave's birthday right clearly somebody there is making a joke just to highlight that dave is there by himself again in the song he's mentioning how britney small you know snuck in alcohol so she leaves when she hears that lyric not liking that she is becoming the villain of this music video um and at the time like dave had had the birthday cake come out and apparently macaroni grill has this thing uh where when it's your birthday you got to stand up on the table and swing your napkin around and that's what he's doing when britney actually leaves so not going well as she walks off during the shoot um emma tells him uh that he he can't do um he can't do that because they don't have time as he's leaving uh and uh it's back to the chaos after dave runs out of britney um one of the other guys uh is telling him that he, he doesn't know um that they, they don't have permits dave's like we're just gonna go like we'll just finish it they don't have time everybody's screaming they don't have time and Dave's like, we still need to get this evolution of man shot. And Dave's like, we'll sh go outside and we'll shoot the evolution of man shot outside. One of the producers or whoever is like complaining because they don't have permits to shoot outside. And Dave turns around and yells, fires back at this guy. He's like, this is Philly. This is Philadelphia. Nobody gives a fuck about permits, right? Cut to Dave going outside um and talking to Brittany and she's like I don't want to be the villain of this video and Dave's like what did you think was going to happen what did you think this story was this is how things went um and he's telling her it's like this is so you're just gonna leave again you're just gonna leave like you left then like this is your strategy you just leave when things get like this right and then she brings up the fact that she controls him and that he's aware of it. So it's like, I, I independently having this thought as I'm watching this, that it feels like she is controlling him, right? And then she brings up kind of a good point that she showed up just to hang out with an old friend, not necessarily to star in this music video. She did say she wanted to be in a cameo, but then Dave took it. So it's, it is kind of like they are using and manipulating each other. Uh, in some ways so I can understand that he is also doing that to her um, so she made a good point there one of many times I realized that oh maybe I am wrong <laughs> uh, and she actually made him feel bad uh, to get her way um, and then played it off like she was just giving him shit which is you know definitely something people do people will be assholes but then play off their assholeness as like, oh, I'm just joking. Well, you can't be a you can't be mad because I'm being an asshole in a joking way. That's okay, right? I'm not a big fan of that. 
Let's take a quick break from this episode to talk about attention, attention. All, all Ray, Ray Taylor, Taylor Show, Show fans. fans. We're excited to announce we've just released a line of exclusive merchandise featuring original artwork inspired by the show. Our high quality shirts and biodegradable phone cases are a perfect way to show your support for the show and make a great gift for any fan. Plus, with each purchase, you'll be helping us continue to bring you great content. So don't wait. Head on over to InspireDisorder.com now and check out the full collection. Thanks for listening, and we hope you'll show your support by grabbing some Ray Taylor Show merchandise today. And now, let's get back to the show. And he's saying to her that, like, oh, I moved on. That's why you're mad, because I moved on. And she's like... You are making a music video about me. It is so clear that you are you have not moved on, right? This entire thing has been about me. And he's trying to play it off. It's like, oh, no, this is just closure. This is closure, right? Um, and then she also mentions that he left out a very specific part of the story is that after this, they actually dated for a month. And then Dave brings up that it's like, yeah, that's right. I gave you five years of friendship and you gave me one month of dating me and then you just left, right? And she's like, listen, it hurt me too. She was 16 first off, so th they were both children and she was having a lot of family problems. She was cutting herself, which obviously Dave didn't know, but also didn't bother to like, they've never had discussions about this stuff, right? And Dave is left a little bit speechless in this moment. Right. Saying that it sucks and that he's sorry that he didn't know that, obviously. Um, but he's just trying to tell his story. Right. And she's fine with that. Tell your story. But I'm not going to be a part of it. She's not going to be a prop in his female demographic movie, bringing up great points that I obviously in my bias and my own personal problems didn't even see. Right. And he asks where she's going, and she points to her boyfriend that's waiting in her car. She's like, that's my boyfriend. We've been dating for three months. And if you had bothered to even ask me, instead of just talking about dating Doja Cat, maybe you would know that I'm in a relationship and dating somebody and, and quite happy, right? And Dave can only ask if the dude's got a big, like a thick pink dick, right? Because it's like that's all he can think about. <clears throat> it's just like, oh, great, you know, another dude. And she leaves after telling Dave that she really loved him, uh, but that doesn't seem to matter to him at all. And uh, it all it's like all th this show in many ways at many times, Dave is confronted with the reality of his actions and is forced to reflect on how he is becoming, how he is to other people. And one of the reasons I love this show is because I, in many ways, as watching this show and tend to be on the side of Dave in a lot of his actions and things and many things that Dave has gone through are very related to me and my personal issues and my past relationships. So in many times, I am confronted with how I may have been act. I have acted at certain points and maybe have a little self-reflect reflection of my own. So uh, as she leaves, she says, you know, she loved him, but it doesn't seem to matter him to him at all. And Dave replies, yells back. It always matters. It always will matter. Right. And then you see one of the producers or whatever come up and tell him they may have time for one more shot, one more setup, right? And he decides to do one last shot um, with a, a version of Brittany, right? And Emma comes up and says that she thinks she can uh, get it. She thinks she knows how to get this shot, right? And Dave tells her, it's like, do what you see because I rely, I trust, I really trust you, right? So, and then you see Emma brighten up, like, finally, Dave is allowing me to do this and letting go, right? Also, Dave, you know, one, being confronted with some truth, and two, he's trying to brainstorm how he's going to finish this video, and it also seems like maybe adding some lyrics to the song as well, because he does seem to add in 
the part of the story that uh, she mentioned was not in it. And maybe they just didn't get to it yet. Either way, uh, cut to what I assume is a new ending uh, where he does mention them dating for a month after um, and how it... uh, how he thought he was now worthy of love. Like she taught him that he was worthy of love, uh, which is a good, it's a very good, you know, ending to that, that story, that song. Uh, Then you see finally this evolution of man scene that he's been talking about the entire episode, the evolution of Dave shot uh, where you have the younger Dave's, walking away like in slow motion silhouettes there's a light in front of they're walking towards the light so you're getting from behind them just the silhouettes as the young daves are walking away and then you see real dave modern day dave walking over to join them and in addition to modern day normal size dave we get the giant walk and and by the way dave is about the size of of Helm, right? Of of this Adam kid. He's not much taller, but then the the giant guy is a clear foot taller than Dave, but definitely makes it funny. He's also wearing one of the curly wig uh curly haired wigs uh to look like Dave at least from that. So absolutely hilarious. Emma yells cut um and that's the end of the episode. Uh and like I said, this one of the reasons I love this show is how often like I see myself in Dave like this show like cuts to my core uh with Dave and his relationships and uh it's such a mirror to how like who I so often was and it's painful to see as it's painful for Dave to have that reflection of himself right whether it's his relationship with Allie and how that, that was like this show. Like I, like I get teared up. I get emotional. It really makes me think of and reflect on past relationships, especially like one relationship that kind of, you know, I feel really messed up. Um, not, I mean, I, it just like, I just in the same ways that Dave messes up where he's so singularly focused on, on himself and his growth and maybe not as open and understanding to the feelings and emotions of his partner as was the end of his relationship with Allie. Um, also his self-destructive nature with Doja cat. I've had, I've had those kind of relation. I don't know what you would call. It's not a relationship, but I've had those things where it's like, it starts off great. And like, by the end, I self-destruct the whole thing. And just, I've done that exact, it's so cringy to see Dave do the things that I've done in the past. Um, his perspective on how things ended with Brittany, obviously I've had similar things with similar relationships. So it's like, it forces me to reevaluate the person I am. One of the main reasons I love this show. As Dave, the character grows, so do I hopefully also using humor to distract from uncomfortable moments is something that I've always done myself never to the point where I've made it part of my career necessarily but it is a tried and true defense mechanism for for me uh also his drive to be great at what he does and to do great work maybe micromanaging I don't allow anybody to I do all the work on my own. I don't have an Emma, but if I did, I would probably be my, I, it would be tough for me to let go and trust, you know? Uh, so I, re- I relate to, to him and his problems and the things that this show brings up and talks about. Um, and because I relate to it, that's why I love this show so much. Um, this episode, very stressful. I loved how it was shot, kind of blending music video and behind the scenes. I love kind of the breaths it takes, slowing down and being calm, just like little breaks from the madness that's going on. Uh, so far, the se- season definitely seems more focused on Dave. You don't really, we're getting very little of the side characters, a little bit of Emma in this one, but 
um, not not much of the side characters at all um, in either of these episodes. Uh, I still kind of hope Mike kind of gets an episode to shine. Um, but I do love this episode for for Emma. Not only is she like directing a bigger budget music video than the one she did with Gata, obviously, but also that Dave finally let go of control and just trusted her to do good work. Trust her that she wants to do good work also, that she has the same kind of desire and drive to put out and be great at what she does the same way that he does, right? Especially given they have that history together working at the ad industry, right? He it's not, he knows her work ethic. He knows her work. She's done all kinds of stuff from, from doing his logo to the show backgrounds and I'm sure designed the wrap for their tour bus. You know, he's seen her work. And so there's a reason he keeps working with her, right? And I love their friendship, right? And I hope that his mom is somehow able to save her hearing aids. Uh, and hopefully the tape didn't damage her walls. Uh, so far, I still love this show. I'm exp uh, exp <laughs> I'm excited to see uh, what other problematic aspects of Dave <laughs> or of aspects of myself, I should say, that Dave will expose uh, next. Next episode, season three, episode three is titled heresy the tour continues to atlanta where an in uh where an encounter with rick ross causes a chain reaction to that requires dave and gata's full attention and that is a wrap for my dave recap today thank you for tuning in make sure you come back next tuesday every tuesday for more laughs, insights, and opinions on this awesome show. And join the conversation by leaving a comment or rating on your favorite podcast platform. Or if you're watching this over on youtube.com slash inspired disorder. Until then, I am shaky voice Ray Taylor who is sick and surviving today somehow. Reminding you to keep it real, keep it funny, and keep watching Dave. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Out! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.